we will basically go through a practice of a uh, typical day for me doing uh, general hurdle work. This is what we do a lot at the beginning of the season when we first start doing event specific work. And it's also not very different than what we do mid to late season as well. Um, I can show you a few different variations uh, that we might do based off uh, the goal for the day or uh, problem fixing, things like that. Um, so I tell my hurdlers there'll be a lot of talking. I might stop them a lot. I might overcorrect them. Uh, I don't like to overcorrect and I don't like to say, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You're doing this wrong. And just keep nagging them throughout a practice. But I'm going to nag you guys. Don't take it personally. All right. Um, so the first thing we do is we find a wall um, for a lead leg cut step drill. It's kind of a twofer. Uh, and a lot of these drills you'll see are not that different, but I think it's how you do them and how you coach it, what your cues are. So that's, I think, the most important part for today. Uh, with the lead leg drill, it's not just about putting your foot up against the wall. The common mistake is you just lift your leg up and put it against the wall. Step back, lift it up, put it against the wall, okay? It is a drill where we're trying to get proper lead leg technique, which is leading with a completely bent knee and not extending until we get past the hurdle. So we want to lead up with a knee and then extend, and we're going to try to keep it somewhat bent and kind of press into the wall, which will press our knee into our chest, kind of exaggerating that knee drive. Um, we got to have perfect arm action with this, all right, because um, it's a pretty simple drill where we can kind of get a lot out of it. Uh, and I keep arm action stuff very simple. I just say, you know, get in a normal running uh, arm action form and then kick the elbow out, okay? Try not to cross the midline with either arm and your arms are just trying to stabilize the crazy movements your lower body is doing. So a lot of people you see are different with arm action. As long as they're coming off the hurdle square, it's doing its job. So don't overcoach over -coach the arm action. I know a lot of coaches think, oh, he's a pretty hurdler because he's right here. And he's ugly because he's right here. And, but it doesn't matter as long as they come off square. Uh, the last thing is the cut step which is the most important part of high-speed hurdling. It is transferring your vertical force of max velocity, this right here, to horizontal force. We gotta get horizontal leading into the hurdle. So to do that, it's kind of a shortened stride. So instead of getting all the way up here, we are going to bring it through, stop it a little early, and pull it underneath our hip, staying on our front half of our foot, not our heel. So we're going to do that as we walk into the wall, into the hurdle. So we're going to pull it and lean in. All right. We do three sets of eight of these. You guys can go ahead. Three sets of eight of them. Take a little break after eight reps. What you're looking for is you don't want this with the plant step. Heel toe. You don't want it out in front and you should See the violent pull back, pull it back. Good, that's right there, Lily. Good, De Danny. That's it, okay. Maybe get a little closer, Kyle, so it's not as awkward for you. Keep your elbows bent. That's one of my biggest cues for arm action. Just bend your elbows. If your arms extend, they are long levers that will tug you back, and that's what makes you not square. If your arms are bent, it's not as violent, okay? Your arm action can be whatever it needs to be as long as your elbows are bent. Whenever you're ready, you can start your second set. Very nice, Lily. Good. Make sure it is underneath your hips as possible. Try to keep it from being out in front. Sometimes if you see like a soft landing, that's not a cut step. Soft landings are out in front, toe down. Hard landings are out in front, heel toe. Both are bad. Got to pull it under. Again, this is kind of an exaggeration of the cut step, but just so they feel where it's supposed to land and how it's supposed to feel when it lands. All right? So Kyle, what I see from you right now is a straight arm on the way back. Keep that thing bent because when that arm is straight here, it's going to come through really big. 
and that's how you're going to land. So keep them bent. Lily, you too. And Danny. Bunch of straight arms on the back. Keep them bent. Keep them bent. Elbows bent. Good. Lily, could you pause on the wall on the next rep? Stop. Okay, good. You see this kind of forward lean, but straight body is kind of, you're good. It's kind of like acceleration where we want a forward lean as long as there's no bend at the waist. That is good. That's what we want. And they should be able to feel that on this drill. Is that everybody done with three sets? Okay, so now we're going to kick it off the wall. The amount of space between is going to be kind of different for everybody. You want to be far enough away, this is a trail leg drill now, where your whole lead leg foot is in front of the hurdle. This is bad. You are, if your foot is anywhere, your heel behind the hurdle at all, you are not working a, lead, a trail leg. You're working a stupid lead leg. Like it's, you're not trailing. So to get in the trail position, the whole foot has to be in front of the hurdle. All right, hands against the wall. It's a lot easier with the fence, um, but when we're indoors, we gotta do what we gotta do, okay? Um, the keys for our trail leg drill. This is a drill that I see everybody doing, and about 99% of people do it wrong. Here's the number one thing people do wrong. They just get over it and get it over with. The knee is driving downward. This is not good trail leg action. They're just doing the movement for, with no purpose, okay? We gotta perfect the movement with these drills. So my three cues are, number one, most, the most important, the knee must stay higher than the foot at all times. Too many people try to skim over the hurdle horizontal, trying to stay low, which is also not good. You want to get your knee and foot into a vertical force position coming off the hurdle. To do that, the knee must stay higher than the foot. Also, that will help if you were just to do something like clip a hurdle, you are going to be uh, less affected, okay? Because the next uh, cue is we want the toe up and out. So if my knee is higher than my foot and my toe is up and out, if I hit the hurdle, I'm just going to graze past it, okay? I'm not going to hook anything if my toe is up and out and my knee is up. Lastly, heel to the butt, okay? Uh, what a lot of people do, especially if you have poor glute med strength, poor hip flexor flexibility, they start to extend early coming off the hurdle and now vertical force is gone. Not to mention you're probably going to hit the hurdle as you extend early. So we want to finish knee to the armpit, knee to the chest, and I make my people hold for at least a second right here. Show me you finish with a vertical force. And you will see that kids that don't do the three cues right, they can't finish in that position. Or they'll do it real awkward like, like that. So those are the three cues, guys. Another three sets of eight. Make sure you're far enough away from the wall so you're not kneeing the wall. So you want to probably get to the side is the best angle to see it. Okay, I'm going to use Danny here as a uh, coaching cue. His first movement, watch where it comes from. Go ahead, Danny. What joint moves first? It's his knee from his heel coming up. This needs to be a hip-driven movement. The hip has to come first. This is bad. If our heel coming up is the first thing that happens, the next thing that happens is the knee staying down. The knee can't go very high with the foot being higher than the knee. So you have to think about it like you're kneeing someone in the chest. So come here, Danny, I'm gonna knee you in the chest. Me and Danny are fighting, so I'm going to, boom. If I'm kneeing him in the chest, does my knee go like this first? No, it is driven from the hip and I am driving my knee into him. Same thing with trail leg. You have got to drive from the hip in this action. The foot trails the knee. It does not come up first. So keep the heel down by driving the knee up with the hip joint. All right, go ahead and try. Knee down or hip or 
I'm going to block you. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. All right, now do it by yourself. Oh, see the, you went back. Old habits are hard to break. Good, Kyle. Good. I'm gonna block you, go ahead. Good. Good. If your foot hits my hand when I'm doing that, that means you're picking the heel up first. Obviously, things aren't always corrected immediately just because you tell them the right thing. It's gotta be practiced and worked on and seen. If it continues to be something, a mistake they make, they need to see it on video. I'm sure all of you see, have video, yep. How, how would you uh, cue the early extension? How would you correct that? Like, oh, so yeah. the early extension, I would just remind them, uh, heel to the butt. So the heel should stay to the butt even on the finish here. My heel is as close to the butt as my body will let me at this point. So then on the way down, it becomes more underneath the knee, and now we're vertical force. Good question, thank you. Let's see if Kyle's doing it right. I'll try to block him. Go. Not bad. There you go. I'm gonna stop you guys right there. So, again, easier with the fence because you can get grab for leverage, but I like to rock with this. So instead of standing there and just making circles with my hip, okay, I like to rock back and reach with my heel or with my back foot so I can move my hips forward past the hurdle as my leg does simulating crossing the hurdle. So again, it's hard with the wall, but if you can kind of reach back and then rock forward as you come up, that's good. There you go, Danny's getting it. I think we're all better with our heel right now. Good, good. One thing also that I hear a lot with trail leg coaching, people say to pull it through. Don't do that. Don't try to pull it through. It is a byproduct of your form and your trail leg technique that it will come through like a rubber band. Because if you get a good lead leg drive, good split between your knees, it will come through on its own. So don't overcoach the trail leg pulling through. Just coach the points that it needs to hit. All right, and this is actually, I mean, I demoed like 10 of these, my hips on fire right now. So like beginning of the year, just these drills, and then the easy ones I'm about to do after this, guys will walk around like, oh God. But it'll, that hip flexor strength and flexibility comes quick, so. But what I like about these drills is we can really isolate the movement, we can slow things down a little bit, and really hit the points we need to hit without adding pounding. Anytime you're adding a jump and a land, whether it's triple jump, long jump, hurdles, you are adding pounding. So, you know, I was talking to, I can't remember who I was talking to, but when you look at it, you know, if somebody's doing triple jump drills, whatever, going over a hurdle, even if it's half speed, it doesn't look very hard, they're not winded, but you are adding pounding every time they land. Always gotta be conscious of it. So these drills are kind of made with that in mind. If you uh, follow me on YouTube or ever look me up, uh, these drills are on YouTube. We use four hurdles, six baby steps apart. So I'm going to heel toe it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lowest notch. Go ahead and walk it down for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there you go. The, I like more space between my hurdles than uh, the typical hurdle coach I see doing these drills. Most 
hurdle coaches do drills where you walk over with your trail leg and things like that. But too many people, I think, stack them side by side. I want my steps to mean something. One of the biggest issues I see in hurdling is people come off the hurdle and their trail leg didn't go anywhere. They let it just land. But if there's a little space between them, and I say you have to take one step in between, so land step doesn't count, bring it over, you gotta get going, land one. Step past, land again. So we're moving and we're covering more ground. It's especially good for somebody struggling to three step that has the speed to three step and you're wondering why they aren't. It's because they're wasting steps and this teaches them not to. So walkovers, first thing we're doing is lead leg. We are not extending the knee at all. Straight up, straight down. So we are just really trying to exaggerate the knee drive. And it should be very elementary feeling to your guys or your girls. So I always am a stickler on the arm action with this. Okay, if people are going through the motions, they'll start dangling their arms and they'll just kind of do whatever. So you gotta stay on them about the arms and the legs will take care of themselves. If you don't drive your knee up, you're barely gonna get over the hurdle or you're not going to get over the hurdle. And I do this same height, same distance for middle school, high school girls and boys. All right, go ahead. Walk into it and then land and one step in between. Uh, lead leg first. Good. 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 Arm action. Arm action. Elbows bent. Good. Good. And then something you see a lot with this is I saw a lot of mistakes this year with my brand new hurdlers that I tried to convert. But people would crowd the hurdle and they'll kick the knee out or they will kick the foot out to try to get over some little cheats they develop. You want to have them swing the foot all the way up the side post. So I think that helps them keep the foot square or, and straight up and down, which all three of you did great. So uh, three reps apiece. Good. Good arm action, good. Yep. And if the height of the hurdle is an issue, I won't even turn away a five foot four hurdler. I don't care. I, I've seen too many good short hurdlers to say you can't hurdle because you're short. If they have an issue getting up and over the hurdle without extending, I would rather you go to the side and just get over an imaginary hurdle as high as you possibly can if you can't get over the actual thing. Last rep. Good, good. Good focus on the arm action. So everyone did three, right? Okay, so now we are moving to the trail leg portion. This is a little bit more complicated because again, we have to get into a trail position to work the trail leg. So we have to step all the way past the hurdle without opening up to the hurdle. So staying square and stepping past. Here's what the big mistakes I see are. People don't step all the way past and they'll turn to the side. What am I doing right now? A bad, tr a bad lead leg. That's all I'm doing. I'm not trailing anything. So step past so you can pull through from behind. Go ahead. Yeah, so a uh, good high lead knee is always good. Good, drive with the knee. First movement comes from the hip, driving the knee. So you probably see similar strength and weaknesses as the wall trail leg. So saw a little bit of this. Kyle, you did pretty good at driving straight through without picking up the heel. But when you get a hurdle, you're supposed to get over it. That's kind of a defense mechanism for the body. Like, I better make sure I get over this, so I better pick my foot up. So. It kind of sounds counterintuitive, but you pick your foot up, you're more likely to hit the hurdle. So go ahead, two more reps. 
Good. Good. Keep the knee higher than the foot. Good. Nice, Danny. Nice arm action. Good. Good. So this is the first time we're working the pulling through arm action. Okay? The biggest issue with that is people swing too wide. They extend and it's horizontal movement. You got to keep it north and south as possible. So people talk about tracing around the outside of your trail leg knee. I just, that works. I just say be as north and south as possible without slapping your leg. Just be this way instead of this way. Good rep. Good, good high finish, I like it. Good, everyone's staying square. Our hips are staying square even as we're going past. That's why they're good hurdlers, good hip flexibility. Good. So that's three lead, three trail, put it together, walking over the middle. Three reps of that. Yep, putting them all together. A little harder for shorter hurdles, so they might make a mistake or two from just the fact that we're making them walk over a hurdle that's a little high for them, but that's okay. It at least is working hip strength, hip flexibility, stability, glute med strength, all that stuff. Go ahead, two more reps. Good. Drive that knee, drive that trail knee. Knee someone in the chest. Good. Nice. Good. I like how Danny's leg action almost looks like the hurdles aren't there and he's just marching, marching. Real good high knee drive, Danny. Don't get in the way. Good, that's better. Yeah. Good. Good. If you notice, Kyle's arm action is not much different than his, I mean, he's just right here, right? Because the hurdles are low and he's tall, he's not really having to work to pull around his knee. And that's how it should be, as north and south as possible without hitting your own leg, all right? So now we're adding another thing to this. Skipping adds to the rhythm, adds a little bit of difficulty to each one. So lead leg, then trail. Uh, we will not skip over the middle though. So here, very rhythmic, it's important to have enough distance in between uh, you and the hurdle on takeoff. So we're here, really vertical force, push down, like that. Give yourself space, good, good. This is another one that it will expose you if you crowd the hurdle, you'll hit it or you will eh, kick it out. A little too close, give yourself space. So standing from behind here, I can really see toes are straight, knees are straight, none of this, none of this. Anybody have any questions at this point? Comments, yeah. Oh yeah, S same day. So yeah, we do all these every day we hurdle. Thank you, good question, yeah. So these are our dailies, our daily drills. Um, they are good to do every day of the week if you want, because there's no pounding, it's okay. As long as you're not like pulling a bothered hip flexor or something. Um, but we just do them on hurdle days. So. Our hurdle days are typically, we have two built in a week, and then let's say we have a meet on Saturday, so we will go event specific Tuesday, Thursday, and then pre-meet on Friday. So usually my hurdlers will come with me on Friday as well, so we'll do these drills all three of those days. Um, and we might do a 300 day another day, and then uh, 110 day the other. Yeah, so I was hoping actually that one of you guys four-stepped uh, so I could show how that goes, but the explanation is pretty simple. We, did, we would do instead of three per, we would do two and two. So 
two lead leg skips over here, two leg skips, lead skips over there. So same with the wall drills, do two and two for each. So yeah, you'll do one less rep on one leg, but you're getting two more on the other. So definitely these drills, we train both legs equally. Thank you. Um, so now skipping with the trail leg is pretty difficult. Okay, it's hard to skip without opening up at this point and step past the hurdle. So got to try to stay square. As best as you can. Very nice. Be bouncy, reach past it, get past it. There you go. Good. Good. It's kind of a rhythm that you learn. Um, it's really awkward feeling at first, but uh, once you kind of go through it, and get used to it, you kind of learn the rhythm of basically as the front foot lands, your trail leg comes off. Good, get past it. Good, good, be bouncy. Good. You'll see, especially <clears throat> hurdlers that don't have any problem getting there, they're shuffle skipping. Like their foot never gets off the ground. I try to at least get them to be bouncy, get off the ground, and be a little bit more of a plyo. Good. There you go. Good. Good learners. All three best rep on the last one. All right. So that's three, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, at this point, this is the start of our practice. So we haven't done any running, any speed drills yet. I, this is slow enough to start with cold, okay? So um, from this point, we're pretty limber. We just gotta wake up central nervous system a little bit, wake up the muscles a little bit. So the drills I pick don't matter, uh, but I try to go fast right away. There's no point in me doing a skips. We basically just did those, right? So I wanna go fast first or explosive first. So first thing I'm gonna do, I might mix it up in a day, but I'll probably do about five uh, speed drills and then just get right into hurdling. So first one, I'm gonna have you do a five box jump where you are jumping over imaginary boxes, trying to land and jump over the next one at the same exact time. So go ahead, you can go one at a time or whatever. Good, land and react. Good, you can kind of jog it out to the green line. Good, good. Nice. Next one I, I really like, a kind of, I think it's a forgotten drill, the high skip, skip for height, because if you look at it or take a picture of someone in midair, you're getting some really good triple extension off of that. So. I'm a huge believer that acceleration in your hurdle race sets everything up. So this is, I think, a must before full speed hurdling. So just skip as high as you can. Good, get up, focus on hang time. Good. If you look at their toes, their toes will typically be pointed down. Good. Nice. Good. So those are power drill, explosion drill, movements that mimic what we're about to do. Now we're gonna go uh, five second high knees. A lot of times you just go like in place and I just say jog it out after I'm done counting down. So we'll jog to the green line when I'm done counting down. Let's all go together side by side. All right, ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Jog it out, good. They covered ground than even they needed to. Good. So we do another five second quick one, mini prime times. Um, if you guys don't know, Danny, go ahead and demo. Five, four, three, two, one. Those are like medium. So I would do it to where you aren't even covering ground. It's right here, as many steps as you can without bending your knee. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Jog it out, good. All right, now I want to do big ones. All right, so we're going to go probably past the green line, just a little bit. 
give yourself enough time to really get up to full speed and then decel as well. Three minutes. All right, ready, go. Good, ready, go. Ready, go. From here, I would get it right into uh, acceleration drill that I think is kind of specific to hurdling. Um, just working an eight step acceleration. So uh, in a hurdle acceleration, typically it should be a push big, push big, and then we're gonna go ahead and get our eyes up and gradually start getting taller so we can see the hurdle, okay? Uh, normal acceleration, as long as your body can stay straight and with a lean, you know, you wanna stay in it as long as your body allows until you gradually come up. So I do an eight step acceleration and I kind of judge how their acceleration is by how far that eighth step goes. So boys should be within a foot or two of the blue mark. Girls should be pretty close to the red mark. All right, so eighth step acceleration as hard as you can, push it as far as you can without reaching in front of your hips. So don't land out here, all push behind. Go ahead, Danny. So his eighth step is right here. He's not pushing enough. He's fast enough, he should be up there. Same thing, we gotta, we gotta get a little bit more push. All right, so part of it is having flats. Obviously you're not going to be able to push as, as well, but it gives kind of a tangible thing of, okay, we're not getting as far as we need to. My steps are a little too short and too quick. So I want all three of you to just work on extending a little bit more on the back end. Try to cover more ground without reaching. All right, let's go another rep. Because if we can't get here on eight steps, trying to push and trying to reach, or not reach out in front of us, but we won't be able to get to the point where we can cut step because we aren't pushing enough at the front. We're gonna end up reaching for the hurdle, stopping momentum. All right, really push, Danny, really push. All right, a little farther. There you go, good. All right, so Kyle has kind of a high heel recovery on his push outs. I think that's kind of limiting how far he's able to push. So those are things that we expose with this kind of eight step acceleration drill that we can really try to focus on and learn from, especially with video. Um, we don't have time to actually go full speed hurdle reps, but when we get to this point, they've already accelerated, they're well warmed up, uh, did all their drills, we will go full speed reps over one or two. And we will discount height, discount distance. So how much you discount the distance is you know, up to you. But for example, a uh, day that we would try to focus on would be if somebody's crowding the hurdle, that means they're reaching out in front so they're not getting a cut step and they're popping straight up. I'm sure we've all had that hurdler that pops straight up. That's because they're getting out in front of their base and they're getting too close to the hurdle, so now there's only one way to go to get over, straight up. So we would, I would force them to cut down by moving the hurdles closer. So the first hurdle, maybe I would go one, two baby steps closer to them. Second hurdle, exponentially closer, so one, two, three, four. So they all have kind of a equal amount of a discount, if that makes sense. Um, uh, and that's also a good kind of end of the season. I want you to feel how fast it's gonna feel to go 13.59 when you're a 13.9 guy. You know, your goal is to go 13.5. I want you to feel that. Or the state meets always got 30 mile an hour winds behind your back. I want you to feel that because a lot of people will crowd the hurdle because they're not used to it. So discounting kind of helps uh, get your 
body feeling those positions in the right places. Um, but yeah, there's not much to that. I video analyze and I use all the cues that we just went over in those drills. Say, see, your knees lower than your foot. Your heel came up first. Or see, your arm went straight here, so now you're pulling off here. So it's all the same cues. It's just going full speed now, which you're probably going to need some slow-mo video to see better and for them to see themselves. So thank you guys for helping me out. Uh, any questions from you guys? Yeah. So the height, I always discount uh, boys to the, the intermediate height um, unless they are so uncomfortable with the race height. I had two guys this year that didn't totally buy into my discount idea. They felt like once they got to the race, they freaked out at the height and jumped straight up. So on pre-meet day, I would say, if you wanna to go to the normal height to feel it, by all means. Or there are certain times where I feel like you're going over perfect in practice and in a meet, you aren't, you aren't even the same guy. So I would try to expose that in practice by seeing if it's the height difference. But um, I always want them to feel faster than normal, and I always want them to feel like their hurdles are easier than normal in practice.